Thanks for watching. This is Mr. Bowman, and in this video, we're going to talk about solving rational equations. Okay, a rational equation is an equation that equates two or more rational functions. So, an equation that contains two or more terms that are fractional, uh, that have fractions as the the terms that make up the equation, it, make it a rational equation. And to solve a rational equation, we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by the least common denominator. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll divide out the common factors in each term to eliminate all of the denominators. What you'll see through practice is that by multiplying by that least common denominator, we're going to create an equation that is either linear or quadratic that can be solved using the techniques that we already know. So here's the first example I wanted to share with you in this video. We want to see if we can solve the equation 9 tenths plus 2 over x plus 1 equals 2 fifths. Uh, so what I want to seek is what the least common denominator might be. Uh, some polynomial that each of these goes evenly into. It is helpful that 10 is 2 times 5. So 5 goes evenly into 10 already. I'm thinking I need the 10 and the x plus 1. So my least common denominator, I'll go with 10 times x plus 1. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that equation that we were given, the 9 tenths plus 2 over x plus 1 equals 2 fifths. And I'm going to multiply every term on both sides of the equation by that least common denominator. So I'm going to take the 9 tenths times 10 over x plus 1, 10 times x plus 1. I'll take the 2 over x plus 1 times 10 times x plus 1. And I'll take 2 fifths times 10 over x plus 1. Now if I've done this correctly, there should be factors that will divide each denominator out completely. So let's check that out. In this first term, 9 tenths, the 10 as the denominator, divides this 10 out completely. In the 2 over x plus 1, the x plus 1 factors divide out. Remember, you can divide out whole factors. Um, and then 5 divides into 10 twice. So what we're left with in each term, kind of working from left to right here, we've got 9 times x plus 1. Plus, here you've got the 2 times the 10, that's 20. And that equals, you know, the 10 became a 2 and we divided by 5. We've got 2 times 2 times x plus 1. That's 4 times x plus 1. And what you have now is an equation that you could have solved in Algebra 1. It's linear. We can solve this for x. Uh, what you might do next is distribute the 9 and distribute the 4. It's not the only next step, but it's one that will work. And now I want to think about maybe getting to that place where I've got all my x's on one side and all my number terms on the other side. So if I subtract 4x from both sides and maybe subtract a 9 and a 20, you know, that's minus 29. What I'll get is something like 9 minus 4 is 5x. Uh, if I've got 4 minus 29, that's negative 25. And if 5x is negative 25, x is negative 5. Now, just like much of the work we've done previously in this course, I don't want to just say I'm done. I need to check and make sure that it actually solves the equation. So if I let x be negative 5 here, if I think about plugging in the value of x that I know, I would get 9 tenths plus, if I let x be negative 5, that would actually be 2 over negative 4. I would get a negative 2 fourths, a negative 1 half. Does that equal 2 fifths? Well, if I think about a fraction that means the same thing as 1 half that has a denominator of 10, that would be 5 tenths. So 9 tenths minus 5 tenths is 4 tenths, 2 fifths. It actually does work. I can say that that solves the equation. 
Here's another example that we'll call example two, not one. <laughs> Let's see if we can solve two over x plus one minus one over x minus one equals two over x squared minus one. In looking for a least common denominator, it might help to factor the denominators first. Now x plus one and x minus one are unfactorable, but x squared minus one can be factored. It's a difference of perfect squares. We could write that as x plus 1 times x minus 1. And what I hope that helps you see is that x plus 1 times x minus 1 would be a great common denominator because each of the other denominators are factors of that expression already. So let's call that our LCD. x plus 1 times x minus 1. So what I'll do is I'll take the expression that we were given, 2 over x plus 1 minus 1 over x minus 1 equals 2 over, I think I'll write the factored form, x plus 1 times x minus 1. And let's multiply every term by the least common denominator, x plus 1 times x minus 1. And here, And here. What divides out? What simplifies? Well, the x plus 1's divide out in this term. In this term, the x minus 1's divide out. And in the term on the other side of the equal sign, both of the denominator terms are in the LCD as well. So we can divide them all out. We have a much simpler equation now. I've got 2 times x minus 1. Be really careful with this sign here. Minus 1 times x plus 1. And that equals simply 2. What I've got to be really careful with is making sure that I, when I distribute that negative through, that I get it to both terms here. So what I really have is 2x minus 2 minus x minus 1 equals 2. 2x minus x is simply x. Negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. And if x minus 3 equals 2, what does x equal? I think x is 5. Now I'm not ready to say that's the answer yet. Let's check it. If I let x be 5, do I get a true statement? If I let x be 5, this would say 2 sixths, which is 1 third. Minus... If I let x be 5, this would be 1 over 4, 1 fourth. Does that equal 2 over, if I let x be 5, 5 squared is 25. 25 minus 1 is 24. That's 2 24ths or 1 twelfth. Let's see if we can make sure that's true. How many twelfths is 1 third? Yeah, it's 4 twelfths. And how many twelfths is one fourth? That's three twelfths. You know it actually works, doesn't it? Four twelfths minus three twelfths is one twelfth. So that's my answer. Thanks for watching.